is up YouTube and click pod nation as always thank you for joining me your boy JG tonight we're gonna start a little different I want you guys to gather around grab your snacks your drinks and sit down and relax because Papa JG is gonna tell you a story and tonight's story is entitled the Roman agenda so there was once this wrestler by the name of Roman Reigns who was once a part of a group called the shield and at this time he was very over maybe due to the group's work maybe due to his work in the group and then one day there was a mean mean little boy named Seth Rollins who turned his back on the poor sweet boy Roman Reigns and at this point the agenda begun the agenda of how can we make this little sweet innocent child named Roman Reigns like a legend by the name of John Cena and over time, the big evil corporation called the WWE would constantly try to make that sweet, innocent little boy, Roman Reigns, the apple of everyone's eyes to see the product they wanted him to be, but not realizing the way he was seen by the eyes of others. And over this time, that little innocent, sweet little boy, Roman Reigns, no matter how, he, how hard they tried, no matter what he did, nobody wanted to like or accept this little boy. And over time, the mean, mean corporation, the WWE, decided they would never stop this agenda until hopefully one day they can make that sweet little innocent boy Roman Reigns the apple of everyone's eyes bigger than life and each time they tried each time they failed each time they tried a new way to get it across but then on August 20th 2018 the big evil corporation, the WWE, had enough. They couldn't handle the way Roman was booed and the fans treated Roman after the sweet little boy won a nonsense title match at SummerSlam 2018. So after this attempt failed, the WWE had an idea why don't we use the only tactic we know that would ever get Roman over and then we have the rebirth of the shield the end what the shit did I just watch I'm looking at Twitter and fools are talking about holy shit the shield this the shield this is disgusting this is absolutely miserable it's hilarious so what you guys don't know is raw currently isn't even over there's still a minute minute or two left there's still a little bit all I know is they were going to set Braun up to you know do the three-way power bomb through the announce table I turned it off I had enough I'm done I don't give a shit this agenda ain't for me Push what you want, man. Sucker these fans how you want. And if you're one of the suckers out there who just went wild for the shield, I feel sorry for you. That's disgusting. I don't say that thing on my ch on this channel. You guys know how I feel. I love everybody's opinion, but if you got suckered in by this, why are you even turning wrestling on on Monday nights? You're a part of the damn problem, not the solution. The WWE is so desperate to get Roman Reigns over 
they literally reuse the shield and then try to portray the shield to try to get, try to port, use the shield to portray Braun as a heel. I know this is where this is going. So they could try to portray Roman as the baby face. I'm done. I will be here every Monday night afterwards. We will record. We will talk about it. But you know what? We won't waste our time with anymore going forward. Roman Reigns. And the shitty thing is, I understand, man. People like to see shit with Roman Reigns' name on it. Whether they like him or hate him, like to see that shit. I don't. I don't read shit about Roman. I don't give a shit about Roman the person. I give a shit about what I see on that product. All you people out here defending him. Oh, he's a good man. He's got great matches. Name some great matches, please. Was tonight's match with Finn great? No. No. Then we had another janky-ass ending where Braun walks out, supposedly to cash in. Oh, shield music hits. Here they come. Get the hell out of here with that pussy shit. So what you literally told me, and Roman fanboys, come on, bring it. We right here. We ain't going nowhere. Hey, and if you a fan of the podcast, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to turn you off. But, yo, we never lie on this bullshit. So disappointed, man. So disappointed. Back-to-back nights of disappointing. If you will... Like I said before, man, if you're one of them fans that fell into the sucker and that stands for anyone and you was chanting the shield, you're pathetic. You are part of the problem, not the solution. I don't, I hate attacking anybody for their opinion on anything, but this shit tonight was disgusting. If you said you love this shit, That's disgusting. To the fans at the arena chanting, holy shit, what was the holy shit moment? What was the holy shit moment, man? I swear, dude, WWE fans, do you even know what a holy shit moment is? KO flying off the top of the 40-foot ladder, holy shit. KO flying off the cage, holy shit. Mick Foley flying off the cage, holy shit. Jeff Hardy getting speared off the ladder while holding on the title. Holy shit. Tonight, if I was in that, if I if I was in that crowd, I'd have been the loudest boo you would have heard. That was junk. That was garbage. You once again wasted my time with a bad product. The whole show was horrible tonight. I ain't giving none of you guys credit, man. Like, the only entertaining part of the show is when the constable got full control of everything to me. And that's because I'm tired of Kurt Angle. And his bias, kiss my... I hate that shit, man. But what we've seen tonight... It's so hard to put into words. Because it's so dirty. It's such a cheap tactic. Because you screwed up. You realize you screwed up. Roman came out... With his entrance tonight, got no response. During the match, he goes, you know, to feed off the crowd and hulk up. But he can't. Why? Because the fans didn't care. And everybody's got this thing, man. Like, I think it's, it's hard. In the same breath that I, like, hate on people, I got to give compliments as well i think for the crowd tonight you guys gave the good response during the match during the entrance there was none there was no booze it was silent it was very silent i enjoyed it the only time you guys really got excited is when finn was getting on top doing his thing i enjoyed Finn, but the match being great no The ridiculous commentary I had to listen to tonight with this Roman agenda, we kiss his butt, we suck his DD for everything. For everything, that's all we heard from all three tonight. I can't handle it, man. I swear to you, next week, like I said, we're going to be here next week. Don't worry about that. But next week, I'm listening to that shit on mute because I ain't listen to no more of this Roman agenda bullshit unless there's a promo. Then I'll, I'll listen to promos all day. I don't even care if it's Romans. I'll listen to Romans. I ain't going to listen to commentary throughout the whole damn show, every damn match, something about Roman. I don't give a shit. It's 
Strowman stinking reigns. Get him out of here, man. This... And I know you guys are going to be like, you just je jealous of what? I've never wanted to be a wrestler in my life. As much as I love wrestling, I've never once been the guy who said, I wish I could wrestle a match. I don't want to. I like to, I appreciate just watching other people do the art for what it is. They do it much better than I'd ever be able to do it. What are you going to say? He's more handsome than me? Get the hell out of here, man. <laughs> that is not a thing I think about ever in my life. You can get every bitch you want. That's fine. He can get so Allison K. The woman I like if you were ever going to just marry one woman on their looks alone, I've never met her personally, so I can't go off her personality, unfortunately. Maybe one day I'll be lucky enough. But just that's it for me. That's my dream woman. I find many of women beautiful, but Allison K is wow. <clears throat> I don't know, guys. <clears throat> As you can tell, <laughs> my voice is giving out a little bit. Recorded a lot today. Not only that, man, I got so pissed. I was yelling at my TV as soon as the shield came out. I was done. I was done. You ain't getting that shit over to me, man. I don't care about the shield. I don't care about Dean Ambrose being so big he couldn't even wear his old vest. Y'all catch that? And it's funny, man. I'm, you know, Monday nights I look through Twitter. I might say a thing or two. I said a couple things tonight. But I'm looking through Twitter, man. And Jitty's mentions the commentary. And if you remember back to last week's Raw, Raw review, I actually mentioned the commentary. Uh, I was just dick sucking rum. Can we hear it again tonight? Like, is this going to be an ongoing thing with you guys? Because like I said before, man, if it is, I'm just going to put your shit on mute. I don't care, man. Okay? I come to your product to see good wrestling. I want to see a good show. I want to see great storylines. I want to see great matches. I want to see something at the end of the night that I come on here and I am just cheesing, losing my mind with happiness, and it's happened. I mean, there's been good shows that we've, we've reviewed. But it feels like each and every freaking week I got to come on here and diss the product. I got to talk shit, man. I got to look through Twitter feeds, man. And people that just have very differing opinions. Than me. We'll leave it at that. They love Roman. You can't tell me what they love about Roman. They try to say a good match. What? What? That's like last night, man. I'm going through Twitter, and I agree with this one. Well, the tweet was something relating to uh, a picture of Roman Reigns and Ronda Rouse together. And it was something like uh, two crap wrestlers, both champions, some, some, some. Uh, one something, and the other one's just not ready. It's too early, basically. And I'm looking at it. And I'm looking through the feed that follows it. You know, everybody loves to leave their comments, especially when it comes to defending Roman Reigns. You don't freaking get it, but whatever. And these people are literally saying he has great matches. What is great about a five-move set? Do you know what a great match is? Like, have you seen a great match? What would you rate Okada... Freaking Okada oh my, uh, Omega. What would you rate Seth, Gauntlet, uh, Seth Rollins' Gauntlet's Gauntlet performance? These are the things I wonder. Because the more and more we do this, the more and more I actually pay attention to what people say on Twitter about the people we watch. Because the more and more I realize, man, nobody has a damn clue what they're talking about. Like, yo, I can say honestly and with all my heart, I've never stepped in the square circle. I don't want to. It's just not my thing. But when it comes to a match, I can break it down. When it comes to a storyline, I can tell you, is it good or not? 
these are observations that make it for 30 something years really making them with a keen eye for at least the last 20 and I mean that's understanding the sport because I got friends that do it I got a buddy who had a match with Christopher Daniels so I know what the hell I'm talking about I know if it's supposed to be good or not or I know if it's good or not this isn't good what we saw tonight was disgusting I don't have a problem with you reuniting the shield but don't use it to try to pass the Roman agenda use it when it when it's needed when it's right not just to try to pass some bullshit cause you know this is the only way you have possibly left to get this over. This is literally your last straw. And if it gets over, congrats to you. I won't be one of the ones. You won't see me here in six to, six months to a year. Like, oh, that was so great. No. It was garbage because how it was done. It's just like, I don't do things I don't do nice things for people and I'd expect nice people don't do nice things for me to expect something in return or to pass some type of agenda or to get my way I do it because the time's right it presents itself and I want to and I want to do it or it's all organic what you're doing tonight is an organic you're force feeding this push like yo not only or the commentators every damn match having to say something about Roman Reigns. And tonight was it ridiculous. You want to talk about three grown men obsessed with another dude? Did you hear Coachman say, oh, well, if this is what we get every Monday, I'll take it. I won't. I won't. For what? I want a champion that knows how to wrestle. That's more than a five move set. That's some personality, some charisma. That is booked the correct way. But we won't get that. So with that being said, let's kick the intro. What's up, YouTube and ClickBot Nation? First off, thank you guys if you sat through that. I really did appreciate And if you happen to skip to get to this portion, I can't blame you, man. It's just how I feel. And we're always going to voice how we feel because we don't play games. But with that being said, man, we still got a whole show to talk about. So the start, night starts out with Roman Reigns, man, coming down. Fans are chatting at him. You suck. You suck. It's all booze. Oh, Roman says he's a man of his word. Crowd still chants, <laughs> you suck. Uh, Roman said he's going to defend it tonight. And then he's going to defend. And then he gives hints. And then he names Finn Balor. Okay, cool. For me, initially, this is the initial pop to the night to try to continue to. I'm instantly like, this is the Roman agenda. They're trying to get Roman over by offering him a title shot to the dude who never got a title shot since he came back from injury that everybody's been saying deserves one so that's the first okay fine thank god constantine baron corbin comes down puts a stop to it says the match isn't going on says last night finn was in breach of contract for coming out as the demon king he had made a fight to agree to fight the real man the man Finn Balor, Balor, sorry, it's Finn Balor. Instead, he was stuck fighting the Demon King. Kurt Angle comes out, lets the constable know, hey, man, you forget, you don't have all the power. I'm actually the GM. We're going to have a match tonight, Roman versus Finn. That's how we start off the night. Then he proceeds to tell constable that he's going to have a match versus Bobby Lash. Match itself wasn't decent. There were some good spots. All in all, I thought this was still a shit way to start off Raw. Lashley gets the win. I didn't expect anything different. It's all a game. It's all a game, man. So, you take Lashley. 
who WWE was trying to push. Now he's fell off the mat. He's having to come out and fight Baron Corbin in pretty much squash matches. I mean, it wasn't. But did anybody think for a second that Lashley wasn't going to win? And I'm not even Lashley, dude. So we cut some commercial after Bobby Lashley wins. We come back. Paul confronts, Paul Heyman confronts Kurt Angle about Brock Lesnar's rematch. He tells him that Brock isn't going to have a rematch anytime soon. And it's over his damn body if he's going to have it at Hell in a Cell. So, Roman, stay in the storyline. Let's continue the agenda here. So, Roman gets title shot after title shot after title shot after title shot. The actual champ who had it for 500 some days, I don't care about what you think about how he was as a champ, doesn't get a rematch at all. Favoritism, biasness, I get it. Technically, he's got to train for the UFC, so I get it. You got to write him off. But it still pisses me off. <laughs> and then Kurt finally says he's at a he's got a fighting champion on his show, and the dude ain't even fought once yet. Congratulations, you're a fighting champion, huh? Yeah, that's why you needed your cronies to come out with you tonight to stop Braun from cashing in on you. So this is how we're gonna do it. Braun's not gonna get a fair shot at the title anytime soon. Because we're going to have the cronies protecting them. Okay. I see you. I see you. We move on. Then we get Sasha Banks, Bailey, Ember Moon versus the Riot Squad. Actually, got to say, I wasn't disappointed with this, man. I love Ru Ruby Riot. It's so good to see her back. And the Riot Squad needed her, man. Now, with that being said, I did actually say a couple positive things about the Riot Squad while she was out. They did do a few impressive things to, compared to what they've been doing. But, yo, with the leader back, with Ruby back, these guys should be back on a roll, man. So I'm pretty excited about what Ruby brought tonight. She looked good coming back, man. She is absolutely amazing. I don't know where else to go with that, man. I'm just so excited, man. It's it's been forever, but the match itself, you know, about halfway through, is when it really started to pick up. And Bailey hits uh, Sarah Logan with the jawbreaker. Sarah Logan recovers kind of quick and lands a cheap shot to Ember Moon to hit her off. Uh, Bailey gets the hot. Bailey momentarily gets another. You know, she gets her little run so she can get the hot tag to Sasha. We get Sasha coming in on fire, clotheslining the shit out of Ruby Riot. I really like this portion, guys. Uh, things start to progress a little bit. Sasha's really on a roll. She goes for the pin count, gets a two count. Liv breaks it up. At this time, Ember Moon gets in the ring, throws Liv out. Suplex. Uh, Sarah Logan actually suplexes Ember Moon outside. Then, dude. Or, hold on, no, sorry. Ember Moon suplexes Liv, yeah, I said it right, Liv outside. Sarah Logan goes ahead and clotheslines the shit out of Bailey, man. Sasha gets Logan, and then Ruby riots. Gets Sasha back in the ring, drops the riot quick. Riot kick wins, one, two, three. One of the good parts of the night. That was good to see. I did enjoy it, so I don't want to beat up on these women. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Ruby. You were amazing. Like JD said, about you tonight, that's all. Next, we get Triple H coming down to discuss uh, Super Showdown in Australia. Damn, man. I If this was 10 years ago, I'd give a shit about this match. In 2018, I don't give a shit. But Triple H has a way of selling shit, man. This is what we mean by good promos. Tonight's promo was excellent. I'm not even going to try to dive in it. I want you guys specifically to go back and watch this. Watch this promo tonight. He sold this fight to me. It's two 50-plus-year-old men out of, way past their bronze, and I'm excited for the match. I'm excited to see how this plays out. I'm excited to see how they go back and forth with each other, man. I love the way Triple H set the story up tonight 
delivered and left me wanting to see more. That's what a promo should be. Okay, even simple promos, man. It's like I say every week with Joe when he drops a promo. He leaves me wanting more. With Shinsuke, the way he portrays his character leaves me wanting more. Roman. But, Triple H. Damn. Way to kill it. Way to kill it, game. Game. Damn. Very impressed. Like I said, I don't want to ruin it, guys. Go check it out. It was very good. Then we get a segment. Or, sorry. Then we get a match between Dean Ambrose with Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler with Drew McIntyre. The first thing I noticed in the match, and it's crazy because you actually hear the commentator start saying it, saying it. But for me, I figured he did it due to his neck. Man, you don't want to keep risking those injuries. So, uh. First thing I noticed, Ambrose got a new wrestling style. Wrestles more of a big man slam style. I liked it. It wasn't bad. It was a good look for him. He's a bigger dude. You can see how stocky he came back. So I think this is really going to play good for him and keep him away from those injuries. But at the same time, I think, honestly, it's going to kill the lunatic character. But I, that's probably what they're trying to do with this. They want to get him away from being the lunatic fringe. So... Match itself, eh, eh. I feel like I've seen this a lot. Even though we haven't seen this in forever, like as soon as they started matching up in the match tonight, it instantly brought so much back from the other ones. The only thing that was really different was the new style, but it wasn't enough to keep it fresh to me. With that being said, uh, we get a power slam by Dean Ambrose, who bounces off the ropes, but when he bounces off the ropes, Drew McIntyre actually grabs his foot for the distraction. I like this. Ziggler capitalizes on this on this moment. And all kinds of plays out where Seth's coming over to confront Drew. Drew messes with Seth. Dean and Seth are trying to get at Drew. Uh, Dean's trying to get back in the ring. As he is, he receives a drop kick for his troubles. Once again, like I said, man, I really like I really like this. The intensity that Dean showed tonight with a couple of clotheslines. And then he, so there was a, a, there was a moment when he hits clothesline, clothesline with both arms. It looked very impactful, and I thought it was actually a great sequence. At this time, we see uh, <laughs> Dolph fall into the corner. We see remnants of Stone Cold stomping him, uh, Dolph stomping the mud out of him, mud hole into him. Dolph attempts to use the ropes for an unsuccessful count. He goes for the zigzag. This gets blocked. Seth and Drew start to brawl. Dolph, that's when Dolph gets in. Seth literally, so Seth's down over here. Drew's on the other side of the ring. Dolph and uh, Dean go back in the ring, and they're beginning to lock up. Seth literally comes, runs in between them. They both go like this. Comes flying out, suicide dive at uh, Drew McIntyre. At this point, Dolph's trying to take advantage of the situation. He goes up for that jumping DDT he does. Instead of that, Dean just holds him up, throws him, catches him for the dirty D, lands the dirty D. Dean Ambrose wins. One, two, three. Welcome back, Dean Ambrose. At this point, I'm still saying welcome back. Sorry, guys. Ah, my mouth is killing me. <clears throat> so, we get a backstage segment. And it's Braun Strowman walking up to Finn Balor. And he just lets him know, hey, I, same thing he said last night. I'm not going to attack anybody behind their back. When I cash in, I'm going to cash in in front of you. Pretty much, Finn, good luck tonight. Which, uh, I'll dive into that a little bit later. Uh... So then we get Elias coming out to try to correct last night's incident. He talks about how at this point, he's already fired three of his staff. He knows Fender makes a good guitar, so he doesn't, he, he knows somebody is trying to sabotage. But who is it? At this point, we get Curtis Hawkins come out. Or Kurt Hawkins. Kurt Hawkins comes out, proceeds to try to talk shit to Elias. Gets down there. 
Bias pretty much tells him, like, everybody knows he's just a damn loser and to get out of here. While he's leaving, he has the audacity to walk back down, challenge Elias again. Elias has had enough. He says, let's go. It was quick. Kurt starts out, uh, Kurt Hawkins tries to start out the match with a roll-up pin. Obviously, this doesn't work. He receives a flying knee for his freaking, for his troubles. Then Elias begins to batter and just beat him. We get another roll-up attempt by Kurt. Elias ain't having it again. Elias knees Kurt on this, uh, on him trying to re-enter the ring. We get the drift away with the one, two, three. Elias walks away once again victorious. So, It was just nice for me to see Elias back in the ring. Shit, feels like it's been forever. I mean, when was the last time we really seen him in a match? I want to see where they're going next with this. I was listening to JD, I think a little while back, and he was mentioning where, like, this is almost done with Elias, where we're at now. And I don't feel like it's almost, well, I'm, okay, I'm mixing up his words. I don't want to say that. He was just wondering, where are you going to take this after this? Because Elias isn't the best wrestler. I mean, he's good. He can work. He can sell. He's not the best wrestler. The gimmick's great, but, I mean, it's only going to last for so long. And that's what I want to see. I want to see where they're starting to phase him to next, or let's get another angle coming out of this. Because, uh, I mean, with the seeing Elias every week coming out, playing about three chords, singing, like, a couple lines, and rarely in matches, I don't really want to keep doing that every week. Like, use him for what he's for. He should be the Intercontinental Champion at this point, especially if you're just going to throw together the Shield. I don't want to see the Shield with freaking two of the belts. Next thing you know, they're going to go win the Tag Team division or tag team to Raw Division Championships from the freaking B Team. Then they're going to have every belt. But I digress. I digress, man. And sorry, that's going to happen a few more times in the show. But next we get another wasted, another wasted damn tag team, man. And I want to be clear with you guys. I always tell you guys how much I love tag team wrestling. I always say tag team wrestling is dead, but I want to be more specific about this. Because I'm listening to JD this week, and he kind of had me questioning myself for a minute. Because he's like, to anybody saying tag teams wrestling that watch NXT. And you know what? He's right, man. I do watch NXT. I do watch other platforms where tag team wrestling is still very alive, well, and flourishing. But in the WWE, I mean, it is in the main roster, it's dead. It's dead. These tag team divisions are a joke. Tonight, we get another AOP versus Titus Worldwide. Like, we haven't seen this last month and a half, two months in a row. Every Monday night, we have nothing else for AOP. They're just going to wrestle Titus Worldwide. They're going to be on the show, but we're not going to do anything with them. Why? Yeah, I know. I, guess. I need a hair because that is getting wild up there. Why, man? Titus starts out. Looks like shit. He's getting dominated. Makes the tag to Apollo. Apollo comes in off the hat tag, hot tag. Tries to go after Razor. Razor jumps down. Ain't him. Big ass clothesline from the back. Knocking him down. From this point on, they absolutely just demolish Apollo. He attempts. He gives a couple moments. He tries to fight back, but he can't. I mean, there's a point he goes for an insecure. He gets swatted down like a little flock. And that's what he looks like, Apollo, next to AOP. He looks like a little baby. So... Once again, man, we get the last chapter, one, two, three, AOP victorious. Congratulations, shout out to them for the win. But what's it doing for them? How is it? How are you getting anywhere? Are they just going to be another tag team that has to wait forever for their opportunities? Revival comes up, starts off very strong. Get an injury, come back, and then shit. AOP comes up, look very strong the first couple weeks. Thought they were booked great. But they're going to end up, I don't know, like I always say, like everybody says, they need a mouthpiece, I get it. But as a team and what they do, they're a great at heel tag team. But why are you wasting them? This is the problem with the product. 
to all you guys who think I just complain about the product and I should just accept it, or not even that. For you guys who think I just don't understand the product, I totally, I get it. I've proven time and time again. I fully get it. I can build great storylines. My issue isn't me wanting to do it. My issue is wanting to see it done and done correctly. And here's another wasted opportunity, man. We got AOP falling down the wayside. Sasha, Bailey, The Revival, AOP. This goes on and on. Wasted talent. We might hear from them again in like two years. That's when they might finally get their push. WWE will feel certain they should finally do this. Cool. Then, ha, we get Ronda Special. Ronda Rousey Special Championship and Introduction. Are you kidding me? Girl's been in the damn sport for four months. She's had four matches. She was hand given the title. I already said why I didn't want to see it on her. I already know it hand Harford the division. I, I was dying laughing because there's one point in here where she literally starts praising all the women and talking about how this is an evo the revolution, the evolution. <laughs> what evolution is that? Huh? The one where you hold the title for the next year and Charlotte holds the title over on there. And then you guys actually meet up at at WrestleMania. That's the, that's the revolution. Nobody else getting the title. It's the Divas era with some women that could wrestle. They're still using beautiful women. Where's your awesome Kong? Where's your hideous, ugly chicks? I love that shit. I don't need looks from women wrestlers. Yo, yes, you guys are, majority of you, very attractive. That's not what I look for. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit what you look like. I don't at all. I'm not one of them dudes. I've never been one of those guys who's like, yeah, I'm a wrestling fan. Yeah, oh, I love, like, Trish is so hot. Trish is cool. All I ever think about Trish is how generic she looked in the ring most times to me. That's why I always thought Lita was the better wrestler. She looked better. She had better moves in the ring. And I didn't mean physically look better. I mean in the ring performance. I don't think Ashka's the hottest chick ever. Now, to me personally, man, she's definitely up there. But at the same time, I think she's one of the most badass chicks I've ever seen. Like Eva Lise. Oh, man, never mind. I don't want to start with her. She is gorgeous. They're all gorgeous. I'm not trying to take it away from them. What I'm trying to say is, man... There's no rev or ev illusion. It's that simple. There's none of that. It's all a joke. The whole division's a joke. A woman who's only been in the sport for four months got the title. Well, sorry. On shows for four months got the title. She's made this ridiculous focus. Like, her win was super historic. Congratulations. At no point did we ever doubt that you were going to be the first ever UFC slash Women's champion. At no point did we question this. At point, no point did I question you getting the title. I think you deserve it at some point. Not now. I would actually book you correctly. I think if the WWE would have booked you the way I said to book you back in what? June? Man, maybe even before then. Might have been money in the bank. I think you would be so much further along now. I think fans would respect you more. As we heard from your special announcement tonight, didn't nobody respond? Nobody give a shit. Stephanie McMahon starts off by talking about how Rhonda's her little her little protege and how she molded her. And every time she hears Rhonda name, Rhonda's name, she just thinks, Steph, Steph, Steph. Rhonda comes out. Says her speech. Stephanie proceeds to try to get the women's locker room against her by threatening, you know, remind them, hey, she wants to break your arm. Rhonda says, hey, I just want to break those arms that deserve it. Like Steph. And then she, once again, I hope she gets suspended. I hope she gets stripped of the title. This is literally the only way you can get the title off her. Without hurting her. 
if anything, honestly, if you suspend her and strip her of the title, it would probably build to the mystique. Think of how much that helps Stone Cold. Just do Stone Cold and Vince, but with Stephanie and freaking Ronda. That's what we're seeing anyways. I get it. I don't think it's a bad thing. But you got to do something to get this title off Ronda, man. I can't sit here for the next year and have these two champions locked so you can get them to Mania. <clears throat> I want there are amazing women on this these rosters. <clears throat> I talk about them every week. Okay? And anybody who's listening to this program, before you even come on and try to tell me I hate because it's women wrestling, go back and listen to my podcast. Go back. Go back, listen to the reviews. Hear how disappointed I am because they're not using all the talent. Hear how I don't like the Ronda move because it literally puts a standstill on everybody else. Unless you're going to face Ronda. And let's be realistic. Do we actually think any of them stand a chance? Do you think WWE is going to do anything to let them win? Probably not. You can't hurt the Ronda mystique. So the only way you can get the title off her right now is for suspending her for her actions against Stephanie McMahon tonight. Strip her of the title. She probably got something to go do anyways. Bring her back. I say about two, three weeks. When you bring her back, make it a literal Vince McMahon Stone Cold situation where at every opportunity... In any kind of basic match, Stephanie's trying to screw over Ronda. Now, I don't want this to lead to them fighting again. What I would like to see this, all credit to JD from NY. So, if you haven't listened to his tape on uh, Natty and Ronda, or sorry, not Natty, uh, Ronda and Charlotte for uh, Women's Evolution pay-per-view, go check it out. You'll understand a little bit more what I'm talking about. I'm not going to just go in and try to dissect that man's words because he's so artistic with them. I wouldn't be able to duplicate it, and I would be sending you a false message. But go watch it. In the end, he thinks Charlotte should be the heel. I think if you had Stephanie in the Vince role, you could align over time Charlotte to her, to Stephanie, just like The Rock gravitated this uh vince with the corporation i think that'd be an excellent idea i think it would bring amazing heat on charlotte i think at that point you start playing charlotte to where she you know she she goes with the i'm better than you i'm the queen charlotte gimmick don't have a problem with it it's good it's pretty good. I don't like the way she talks. I don't want to copy JD, man. But he says she talks like a robot. Fully agree. But with that being said, I think that's a great storyline. I think evolution is just too quick to try to get this across. But that's just my personal opinion. With the way he does it, I mean, it really does sound absolutely amazing. But I just think my story would play out over time. Not only that, you could get Charlotte off SmackDown. You could let Becky win the belt. Get Charlotte off SmackDown. Get her over to Raw, and the way you could do that as well is is you could be like, uh, have Stephanie portray to call Shane and be like, hey, I need a favor. I need one of your athletes. And then she'd just be like, I brought in somebody special just for you, Ronda, the greatest woman's champion, whatever the hell she wants to feed else into there. Pull out Charlotte Flair. Here comes Charlotte Flair. We got our first stare down between Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey. Side still delivered. Here's my money. I'll be there next year to watch it at WrestleMania. It'd actually be good. You probably wouldn't hear no freaking complaints from me. But it's not. And I want to have faith in WWE creative, but what am I supposed to have faith in? So, we get a double-decker match here. We get the B-team's Bo Dallas versus Scott Dawson to start it off. Scott Dawson wins. Them boys look amazing. Even in solos, the revival is absolutely phenomenal. As immediately after this ends, we get Curtis Axel calling out Wilder. Wilder beats Axel. So, tonight, 
we get both of them upsetting the other two in singles competition. But at the end, Bo reminds them that together they're still undefeated. Let's go Revival. Let's get the belt on the Revival. We know this is leading to Hell in a Cell. What I want to know is, are they actually going to book them to win? But we're going to find that out. We get a backstage segment. Stephanie McMahon with Kurt Angle. She gives him time off. Tells the constable he is now currently the acting GM of Raw. Absolutely love it. I thought this was going to play into the main event where he's going to come out at the last second and stop it. And then that's when Braun would come down and be like, hey, you can't stop this and cash in the bank and let's get a match going. But no, we get Finn versus Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns' first title defense of the Universal Championship since winning off Brock Lesnar last night at SummerSlam. When Roman comes out, comes out, as I said in the intro, there was absolutely no sound whatsoever. None. It was silent. You hear crickets. And that's either because there was so loud of booze they turned down the audio all the way, or just nobody gives a shit. And they finally all smartened up and realized the only way we're going to get the WWE to make changes is by not responding to this man at all. Then we get the match. Didn't look good. Roman looked like Roman. At one point, Roman gets knocked down. Him and Finn are both laying out, laid out. He's trying to hulk up. He's trying to feed off the crowd, you know? Nobody's saying anything. It's completely silent. So, Braun's mu Braun Strowman's music hits. Comes strolling down. I'm not getting excited. I'm not buying into it. After last night, I already knew this shit wasn't going down. So I'm like, whatever, let me see where this leads. Braun's just slowly making his way. While this is going on, Roman gets distracted. Finn gets the upper hand and starts rolling. Gets Roman down, laid out for the coup de grace. Goes up to the top rope, hesitates for a minute looking at Braun. Realizes Braun's just slow pacing and coming to take on whoever wins. Like he said... Goes for the crew de gras, misses, receives a spear for his troubles, gets pinned, one, two, three. Braun gets in the ring, sits there, let Roman rest up for a little. Roman gets up, Braun boots him, wants to cash in his money in the bank. We hear the shield music hit. This is when I literally was like, yo, I want to turn it off right this second, but I got to at least watch part of it. To be able to report something to you guys. And I saw everything but the final part. Final minute. So. At this point. Dean and Seth Rollins come out. And we should have known this was coming with all the things. On how different people tried to join the shield with Seth. We should have known this was coming back. Why didn't we think about it? But we get Seth. And Dean coming down, both on either opposite side. They go in. They all attack Braun. Braun gets his moment. It ends with Braun going through the table, getting power slammed. That was raw. But with that being said, guys, I just want to thank you for sitting through the video. Please like and subscribe. Since he's out here, let me show you this beautiful little man. This is my little man, little JG. Say hi. Tell him hi. Okay, we'll be over there in a minute, okay? But with that being said, guys, I'm going to hop off, tend to my little man, but I will see you guys tomorrow with more Madden and WWE reviews.